Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Taking a look outside, it is clear and it is 51 degrees. We'll have to check with Sarah to see if it's going to get any colder than that. Good morning. I'm Jonathan Cotto filling in for Max Massey this morning and joining Sarah. How are you? Oh, so good to have you, Jonathan. Thank you. And when I opened the door this morning, I, I knew it was going to be cold or colder, um, but I wasn't I wasn't ready. Yeah. I wasn't <laughs> mentally ready because, you know, when you're in the upper 80s all week and yeah. now it's at 51 degrees, Sarah. I think that's it, right? Like our, our bodies were used to the heat for a few days and now we're back to cooler weather. It is near 50 degrees around San Antonio. It's 51. 49 though in New Braunfels, 55 in Pleasant and 46 in Bernie and 55 in Del Rio. You'll also notice that there is a little bit of a uh, patchy fog out there. Visibility lowered around the San Antonio metro area, but especially out near Del Rio where visibility is at two and a half miles. That's because there's a little bit of a uh, drizzle out there out west as well. And we could have some patchy drizzle around San Antonio, but all in all today is going to be a cloudy day and pretty cool. Our high temperatures expected in the upper 60s today and even tomorrow clouds are going to be stubborn. We'll have a little bit of fog and drizzle. It'll be muggy, warmer and windy with a high temperature near 80, but we will see peaks of sunshine in the afternoon tomorrow. So all in all, a bit of a gray weekend for us, but looking ahead, we do have plenty of sunshine in the forecast. I'll tell you what you need to know coming up in just a bit. Jonathan. Thank you, Sarah. Well, a community united in grief after three lives were lost in a trailer home fire in Von Army. Last night, the community came together to remember those who had passed away. You can see the large group of people there supporting the family members of those victims. 39-year-old Vanessa Ortega and her two grandchildren, 3-year-old Mia and 1-year-old Ezekiel Oyavides, died Sunday morning in that fire, and their family will never be the same. It's not easy. It's not going to be easy. This is a new journey for them, and, and um, we need to pray for this family. Right now, crews are still trying to figure out what exactly sparked that deadly fire. It was five years ago, as of Friday of the death of San Antonio rapper Christopher Polk. Polk was shot and killed while he was driving on February 24th of 2018. And San Antonio police are still looking for clues in his murder. He had just left the ice lounge at Evers Road in Loop 410. SAPD releasing this video, hoping it will help them lead them to the suspects. Officers are looking for two vehicles, a silver SUV and a black sedan. They say the drivers of those vehicles drove up next to Polk's car and started shooting. Polk died at the scene. If you know anything, you can call police. You're asked to call 210-207-7635. And a local school district is asking parents to remind their children of the consequences of taking a gun to school. That's after a gun was found apparently in the bag of a Roosevelt High School student yesterday. Now we want to be clear there was no shooting and no one was hurt. In a letter to parents, NEISD stated that student did not make any threats. Still, weapons are not allowed on a school campus. That student was arrested. It's a parent's worst nightmare. Police in San, in San Marcos say a student was hit and killed in the parking lot at a middle school there. It happened yesterday morning during drop off at Goodnight Middle School. The 11 year old student was hit in the drop off line at campus. The driver is not being charged. School was canceled for the day. The University of Idaho plans to tear down the house where four college students were murdered in November. U of I says the previous owner of the campus residence uh, in Moscow gave it to the school. And according to the school, the demolition is to promote healing and avoid sensationalizing the crime scene. Now, plans are in the works for a memorial garden to honor the victims. Ahead of the busy spring break travel season, the TSA is reminding passengers about the rules regarding traveling with their pets. So small pets can travel in the cabin of the aircraft with their owners, providing their crate or container can fit under the seat. TSA reminds passengers it's not safe for your pet to go through the x-ray tunnel. They say to carry your pet through the walk-through metal detector or use a leash. After passing through the security checkpoint, your pet should be returned to its carrier. And the Food and Drug Administration has approved an at-home test that checks for both COVID-19 and influenza. It's made by a California biotech company. The test is 99% accurate at detecting a negative result for influenza A and 90% accurate for a positive result. 
It's considered 100% accurate for detecting a negative COVID-19 result and 88% accurate for a positive result. Now, flu season is just about over, but the U.S. has seen more than 235,000 new COVID cases just this week. Now, people from California to Connecticut on alert as major winter storm moves across the country. Heavy snow, flooding, dangerous winds, and bitterly cold temperatures all in the forecast. ABC's Daria Albinger has more. Several feet of snow expected as a winter storm hits the West Coast, a rare sight for some, like in the Bay Area of California. This historic storm will continue to bring blizzard conditions to Southern California. Here you see it all in the red. Some of these counties never seen this stuff before. Blizzard warnings are posted in the Sierra Nevada and Southern California mountain ranges. The weather so severe, major roadways closed. Drivers on Interstate 5 north of Los Angeles forced to make U-turns. It's pretty treacherous conditions up north. There's a lot of snow, a lot of ice. In Kern County near Bakersfield, a truck ended up off Highway 58 going over an embankment. There's also also terrible flooding, streets near the Hollywood Burbank Airport underwater, stranding some drivers. And in Santa Barbara County, powerful winds sent trees toppling over onto homes. In the Midwest and Northeast, people are digging out power lines encased in ice in parts of Michigan, leaving many still without power. The western storm is expected to move east over the weekend, bringing the threat of damaging wind to the heartland on Sunday. This same storm will move into the northeast early next week and could develop into a winter storm with heavy snow and rain. Daria Albinger, ABC News, New York. Well, if it isn't wildfires, it's blizzards. California seeing it's, it all. It's crazy to see um, parts of northern Los Angeles having snow. Yeah, the Hollywood lizards. sign. Did you see that picture? Yes. Wild. Unheard of and unseen. Definitely. Yeah. Wild times. Well, temperature is 51 degrees, 607. Well, today on Texas Eats, David Elder is taking us to one of the Alamo City's newest spots to find Filipino cuisine. An American Idol is going to see a local face this weekend. Next, we'll talk to you about 25 year old Cody Winkler and his dream that's coming true as he'll be performing in front of the American Idol judges. Much chillier start this morning, 51 degrees. And how long will these cool temps stick around for? Sarah Spivey will have our weekend forecast when we come back. When you watch American Idol this weekend, you'll see someone very familiar. That someone is 25-year-old Cody Winkler. He graduated from Clemens High School in shirts and says he didn't start singing publicly until just about two years ago. So before that, Winkler says he would sing to himself while working on a ranch. Now these days, he performs around Texas and lately for the American Idol judges. I walked in the room and my eyes, I was mesmerized. I, 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 my mind went blank and I didn't know what to do. But the second I walked in the room, I have just went in there like I owned the stage and just did my thing, what I've been doing for the past two years, and it just comes natural. Now, Winkler's audition airs this Sunday at 7 p.m. on American Idol. You can watch it right here on KSAT 12. Now, I got to say, that's a good old country boy. That right is. There. Oh, my Absolutely. gosh. Absolutely. And I wish him the best. Absolutely. Good luck, Cody, yep. from we'll all of us. You on no matter what happens, this is going to be such a memorable experience. It really him. is. It really is. Good luck to you, Cody. Now, we're going to be talking about some areas in the country that are going to be experiencing some very high winds a little bit later on this week. But first, I want to get you through your weekend. Let's go ahead and take a look outside right now. You can see that it is cloudy. It is cool out there. Temperatures are right near 50 degrees, and it's a bit breezy, too. We've got north northeast winds at about 15 miles per hour. That's preventing widespread fog from developing around San Antonio. Whenever we have a higher wind, again, that fog does tend to, to stay away, at least for a little bit. Uh, but as we look across uh, areas out to the west, you can see that it is pretty drizzly and foggy out near Rock Springs, where visibility is at a mile. Visibility is down to two and a half miles in Del Rio, down to seven miles in Carissa Springs. A little bit closer to San Antonio, we're seeing visibility as low as about six miles in New Braunfels, as low as five in Port S.A., and as low as five 
five mile visibility out in areas uh, closer to Kerrville and the Hill Country. As for temperatures this morning, a little cooler up in the Hill Country. We've got 45 in Comfort, 46 in Kerrville, 47 in Bulverde. It's 54 in Rio Medina, 53 in Port SA, and 51 in Zagin. So you'll want that light jacket early this morning. Now, as we look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast, though, a sprinkle or two is possible early this morning, but we're going to stay cloudy all day long. Temperatures this morning are going to be in the 50s, and then by about noon, we'll start to get into the 60s. It's going to be a cool day. You know, I can't rule out a peak of sunshine or two in the afternoon, but really mainly socked into cloud cover for most of us. We'll have east northeast winds at about 5 to 10 miles per hour, right around 67 for the high temperature in San Antonio. But it's going to vary drastically depending on where you live. The further south you go, the warmer you'll be because you have a lot of more sunshine than us around San Antonio. So in Laredo, it's going to be in the mid 80s today, but 68 in Del Rio, 73 in Uvalde, 71 in Hondo, 68 in New Braunfels, 68 in Kerrville, 64 in Rock Springs, struggling to get out of the 50s in the northern part of the hill country nearer to Junction and Ozona this afternoon. Now, today is actually going to be the coolest day over the next several days for us. Tomorrow will be near 80 degrees for your Sunday forecast, still relatively socked into cloud cover. But then notice how during the middle of the week, highs will be in the mid to upper 80s, a lot like last week, where in the middle of the week we had a warmer stretch. But we do expect a more potent cold front arriving Thursday night into Friday. That'll knock our high temperatures back into the 60s as we close out the week. So I want to talk about the weather setup here. Again, you can actually see some of that drizzle and sprinkles out near Del Rio, but a wider view across the nation. There's that snowstorm that they were talking about that's going to impact parts of the Northeast. Meanwhile, here's the system out in Southern California that's bringing some snowfall to the mountains there and lots of heavy rain to LA. This cold front is going to affect Texas in a pretty unique way. It's going to be bringing some very high winds to areas across the Panhandle, down to Big Bend, Midland, Odessa, El Paso. Some of these areas could see wind gusts of up to 70 miles per hour. All right, little geography lesson. What's out west? A lot of dust. So as we head into Monday, we may have to watch out for a little bit of dust around San Antonio. We do not expect wind gusts that great here in San Antonio. In fact, maybe a wind gust of up to 25 to 30 miles per hour Sunday and Monday. So it won't necessarily be too windy in San Antonio over the next five days, but we'll be keeping our eye to see if that dust kicks up and moves into San Antonio, especially by Monday. Otherwise, again, it's going to be a pretty warm week ahead for us after this cool day today. Temperatures will be climbing up into the mid to upper 80s by Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. Unfortunately, no significant chance for rainfall for us over the next several days, but coming up, we are going to talk about what parts of Texas will be getting some rain and even and potentially some severe weather as well. Another 88 on this week's forecast. Yeah, we'll see if we can get to 90, our first 90 degree day of the year. We'll see. Goodness, I hope not. <laughs> it's coming, Jonathan, it's whether coming. you like it or not. No. Every time I hear cold front, it's music to my ears. I know, ears. you said it earlier. He was like, oh, good. <laughs> yeah, well, we've got a little like bit this. of everything for everyone this week. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Well, let's enjoy the cold temperature while we have it. 50 degrees, 616. Coming up next, David Elder takes us to one of the Alamo City's newest spots to find Filipino cuisine. All right, Texas Lottery, pick three. Those lucky numbers, four, eight, seven, and Fireball five. Daily four, nine, one, three, nine, Fireball one, cash five, 20, 21, 26, 29, 30. And Mega Millions, 222, 49, 65, 67, Mega Ball seven, Mega Plier four, good luck. This pork dish, what's going on with this one? It's our Filipino lechon that's been roasted in the oven for four hours. They've coated the inside with lemongrass and fresh herbs that have really made it super aromatic. We have a traditional dipping sauce to accompany some pickled papaya as well. Sauce on the outside, here we go. It is so good, it is phenomenal. The porchetta that they're making in-house 
is a traditional dish that they're putting their own spin on. I love all the herbs. The way that it's put in between all the little crevices in there, and it's all that flavor just build on the inside. Super crunchy skin on the outside. That pork skin is just rocking. It is tender, it's crunchy. The sauce on the side has a really good flavor to it as well. It really balances everything out and creates the ultimate bite. Goodness, David Elder always teasing us with these that deliciousness. That looks so good. <laughs> I want lechon. I yeah. want whatever that is. Yeah, me too. Yeah. And it's 621 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> we'll eat anything in the morning, right? <laughs> okay, so a galactic discovery made over the week what it's revealed about science in the early formation of the universe. The James Webb Space Telescope has made a surprising galactic discovery in the distant universe. It's revealed six massive galaxies that existed between 500 million and 700 million years after the Big Bang that created the universe. The findings were shared in a study published Wednesday in the journal Nature. A study co-author said that massive galaxy formation began extremely early in the history of the universe that may have changed what many astronomers had thought was settled science. Wow. Okay, a man in California is claiming someone stole his winning Powerball ticket worth more than, get this, $2 billion. Legal paperwork says the man bought the ticket for the record-breaking Powerball jackpot the day before the November 7th drawing in California. After claiming someone else stole the ticket, he reported the theft to law enforcement and the lottery. The California lottery says it's confident the winner it announced on Valentine's Day is the rightful jackpot recipient. Huh. Fishy, fishy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, time is 625, temperature is 50 degrees. And do you want to see what types of food are worth seeing this year at the San Antonio Rodeo? Still ahead, we'll have a preview of which food tastes best. And with yesterday marking one year since Russia's war in Ukraine, support is pouring in for Ukraine, including from residents right here in San Antonio. Still ahead, what one business is doing to show their support. Good morning, San Antonio. I'm Jonathan Cotto, filling in for Max Massey this Saturday morning at 6.30, and I'm joined here by my TV sister, Sarah Costa. My TV brother. <laughs> People say that we look like brother and sister, yeah. and I think it's a compliment, personally. Oh, I think it's a compliment <laughs> as well. <laughs> All right, it is, it is February 25th. We are at our last weekend of February, and Sarah, I know it's 50 degrees right now, but later this week, it's gonna definitely start feeling like spring again. It is, and for what it's worth, I consider you guys my TV brothers and sisters. Oh, oh well, Sarah. you're obviously the my feeling, sister too, Sarah. The feeling is mutual. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, yes, we are going to feel a lot more like spring a little bit later on in the week. But first, we have to get through today. Today is going to be a cool one. 50 degrees in San Antonio, 49 right now in New Braunfels, 46 in Kerrville, 43 in Rock Springs, 55 in Del Rio, 60 in Catula. Now there are areas of fog and drizzle, especially out west toward Rock Springs. Uh, where visibility is down to half a mile. Visibility is down to two and a half miles in Del Rio this morning. Visibility down to five miles in Yavaldi. Around San Antonio, not too bad, although there are some areas of patchy fog, especially up closer to New Braunfels. All right, it's the last weekend of the rodeo. If you're planning on heading out there to the rodeo grounds and to the AT&T Center, it's going to be cloudy for most of the day, perhaps just a couple of peaks of sunshine in the afternoon, but 60 degrees at noon, 67 for the high. We'll have east north these winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour in a cool and mostly cloudy evening with temperatures in the low 60s. Here's what we're going to be talking about in the forecast. Tomorrow we will have morning fog and drizzle. It'll be noticeably muggy and temperatures will be in the 70s, so warmer than today. And in the week ahead, it'll be springish. We're going to be sunny and warm with highs in the upper 80s like last week. And then finally, I do want to talk about West Texas dust. We'll be monitoring for some of that dust moving into San Antonio by Monday. So a lot to unpack in the forecast in just a few minutes. Jonathan and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. The I-35 to I-10 ramp was shut down for nearly an hour this morning after a wrong way driver crashed into an ambulance. San Antonio police say the driver was spotted on the westbound lanes of I-10. 
Around 3 this morning before attempting to get onto I-35, that driver crashed into an ambulance head on. Police say there were no injuries and the driver was taken into custody under suspicion of DWI. And this morning, a West Side neighborhood is in total disbelief after an 81 year old man is killed by a pack of dogs. And now one of the dog's owners is in police custody facing a state felony charge, injury to elderly and criminal neglect. Now, the dogs were euthanized just hours after the attack on Depla Street near Couples Road. Now, multiple neighbors say they have witnessed the dogs bite people in the past. A woman who lives on the street over uh, one street over says she saw the same group of dogs attack another man last month. Now, Animal Care Services says two of the dogs in Friday's attack bit someone earlier this year. But ACS has not confirmed if that video is of that January incident. She's in disbelief that the dogs were previously released. Fortunately, I, I noticed that it has to be something bad for them to actually take action and they should just do it on the first time. I mean, these dogs were taken in quarantine, that's what I was told, and they came back and this happened. ACS says they've had made contact with the dog's owners multiple times in the past. That includes at least two confirmed bite cases involving at least two of the dogs. A former San Antonio police officer who was charged after shooting a teenager in a McDonald's parking lot was in court yesterday. The hearing of James Brennan's first initial court setting. His attorney, Nicola Hood, and assistant director, attorney Daryl Harris, spoke briefly about the case and evidence. You may remember police arrested Brennan last October, less than two weeks after he shot 17-year-old Eric Cantu multiple times and fired toward another teenage passenger while they were inside a car outside of McDonald's. The passenger was not hurt, but Cantu spent weeks on life support. Heart disease is the leading death among American adults, and with this month being Heart Health Awareness Month, doctors are encouraging people to stay more informed about the risk of heart disease. Now, the da data from the Center of Disease Control shows us more than 121 million people in the U.S. have some type of cardio cardiovascular disease. And the Alamo City is no stranger to this problem. Preventative measures everyone should consider are getting screened, knowing your family history, and maintaining a healthy heart diet. So we spoke with the cardiologist at University Health, and she tells us it's important to know the background about heart disease between men and women. That's important is that there's a difference in men and women. Women present later in life, and um, we believe that's because there is some protective effect of estrogen. So an older woman should certainly be aware, especially post-menopause, that the risk of cardiac events starts to go up. If you're interested in getting a proper heart testing or a heart test, there's a special clinic set up at University Health. You can learn more about it. Just head on over to our website, ksat.com. Well, it was nearly a year ago that a local cheese cu cheesecake shop was inundated with support for its mission to help people in Ukraine. And this weekend, Like a Cheesecake on Broadway is doing it again. The business is holding a one year of war fundraiser and today proceeds from all sales are going to support the armed forces of Ukraine. We've been getting uh, donations from people today, uh, just like driving all the way from like out of town to just come and donate and support us. Like a Cheesecake is located along Broadway, not far from Hildebrand. Great food raising money for a great cause. The Raindrop Foundation will be holding their annual Turkish food fair today. But this year, all proceeds will go to victims of the earthquakes who have direct connections to the Turkish community right here in our own community, San Antonio. As search and rescue efforts continue two weeks after massive quakes killed thousands of people, many are forced to sleep on the street in cars, tents and parks. Meanwhile, those in the area are dealing with the aftershocks that are also claiming lives. Now, the Raindrop Foundation plans to send all the proceeds from today's food fair to those in need, and their goal is to raise more than $15,000. Our Turkish food fairs has a very rich menu. So we have menu, uh, like we have food for the entry level and we have food for, for main dishes. I also like the gyro because the gyro in here is very different from the gyros in the restaurants. It's kind of mostly kind of handmade. Now, folks, the event will go from 12 to 4 p.m. in front of the Raindrop Foundation's building. That building is located at 4337 Vance Jackson. General admission is free, but it, you will need to buy tickets to try that tasty, delicious food. 
Before she became president of St. Philip's College, Adina williams Lawson had not only led the community colleges in El Paso and Houston, she also worked at NASA. And while at NASA, Lawson restarted the Educator Astronaut Program. That was after Krista McCaughley's death in the Challenger explosion. To get where she is now, Jesse de Goyado tells us how Lawson overcame the sting of racism growing up in the Jim Crow South. St. Philip's President Adina Williams Lawson often doubles as a campus tour guide. The same woman who at one time was NASA's chief education officer was the same little girl growing up in Mississippi under Jim Crow, using colored only water fountains and restrooms. Every time I entered a public building, it was through the back door. Lawson says the first time she was in a class with whites was in graduate school. 1973, that's the first time. Years earlier, she went to summer schools, said up by the Freedom Riders. I attended the Freedom Schools and I can remember them throwing Molotov cocktails into the building while we were there. Freedom Riders died fighting segregation. Most were white college students from up north. Fear is why Lawson says neighbors saw her as a 10-year-old troublemaker helping her mother. She says her father, a master plumber, restored the family's humanity each time a white customer used the N-word in speaking to him or his children. I have a special price just for you. And people thought Dad was giving them a good deal. It's a lesson Lawson says she's never forgotten. You don't get mad, walk away, stick your head in the sand, pretend it doesn't exist, you deal with it. Given her background and now as president of a historic black college nearing its 125th anniversary. St. Philip's College has come a long way and Dr. Aldina Lawson says she's determined to take it even further. Making sure, she says, that other voices yeah have a voice. And you don't intentionally silence one group of people. Jesse De Goyado, KSAT 12 News. What a story. And as we continue to celebrate Black History Month, there are still events happening across San Antonio that you can be a part of. If you have some free time later today, consider swinging by the Carver Library. City officials and volunteers will be hosting the fourth annual San Antonio African American Book Festival. This event was created to highlight the power of black literature, reinforce the importance of representation, and encourage black economics. This event is free and open to the public. The first part of the event is between 10.30 a.m. and 3 p.m. at the Carver Library Meeting Room. The second part of the event will be between 12 and 5 at Second Baptist Community Center. Happening today, you can take your pick of free fruit trees from lemon, orange, pomegranate, and avocado. These are just a few of the types of trees that the San Antonio Parks and Recreational Department is giving away this weekend. There will be over 800 fruit trees for free at the newly named Sweet and Green event starting at 8 this morning at Rosedale Park. The free event is on a first come, first serve basis. And strawberry picking season is sprouting and several farms near San Antonio are letting you come pick your own produce. So today the Sweetberry Farm in Marble Falls will be open for strawberry picking. While Hill Country locations won't be open till March, you can find more open locations on our website. That's ksat.com. Today at 9 a.m., the Center for Health Care Services in Bear County's local mental health authority is hosting a hiring fair. They are looking to fill more than 30 positions that includes care managers, licensed clinicians, and licensed chemical dependency counselors. If you plan on attending, make sure to bring your resume and be ready to have an on-the-spot interview. It's happening at the Center for Health Care Services Central location starting at 9 this morning and going until 1 p.m. in the 6800 Park. 60, six, uh, that's at 6800 Park 10 Boulevard in the West Building. Now, folks, it's the weekend, and surely you're going to be out and about this Saturday. So if you're going to be on the roads this weekend, construction closures will be stepping up. Our track authority, Stephen Cavazos, tells us where they are and how to avoid those track up, traffic backups. Road work is expected to continue in and around the Alamo City throughout the weekend. So as always, just make sure you plan your commute ahead of time because we're going to see work take place here along Loop 1604 on the north central side of San Antonio. In fact, material haul off will begin around 8 in the morning on Saturday and hopefully should wrap at 3 in the afternoon. We're going to see a westbound main lane exit ramp closure from Lock Hill Selma to Vance Jackson Road. So again, plan that commute around that area. I-35 on the northeast side of San Antonio will see striping and barrier work take place overnight. Now now that's been current, but the work will continue on Saturday, February 25th at 9 in the evening and should wrap 
hopefully by 5 in the morning. We'll see alternating lane closures along the I-35 southbound connector ramp to Loop 410 westbound. All right, one last jump for the weekend as we get ready to wrap it up because utility work will take us all the way up until Monday, February 27th. That work does begin at 9 in the morning and should hopefully wrap around 3 in the afternoon. A southbound lane closure at Cedar Trail is what drivers can expect. And hey, plan the commute ahead of time. As I said, know before you go, scan that QR code that takes you to our KSAT traffic page. We have a full list of all the closures that are happening in our area. So again, plan that commute ahead of time, guys. Thank you, Stephen. That's right. Plan your commute ahead of time and also just drive safely. It is 642 and 50 degrees. And with rodeo ending today, there's still time to check out all the fun activities going on, especially eating some of that tasty food. Coming up next, meteorologist Mia Mon Montgomery gives us a taste of the foods available at this year's rodeo. What a hard assignment, Mia. <laughs> <laughs> so difficult. What's not too difficult is this weather. I think it's beautiful outside. I like to see it at 50 degrees the end of February, but Sarah Spivey says those cool temps aren't going to stick along. Goodness. Stick around for too long. She'll have our forecast when we come back. Parts of the rodeo is the food. Let's go check out the rodeo grounds and see what's on the menu. A day we have been selling um, turkey legs, 2,000 a day, and corn dogs, 2,000. A little bit more than 2,000. It just depends on the crowd too, but for sure it's like 2,000 a day. Would yes. you say that this year's turnout like beats any the of the best? The best year that since we started because every year it's like cold or rainy, so this year has been a perfect weather. Fried peanut butter and jellies as well. And, and those are, yeah. I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah. I love peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. <laughs> Do you want them? This is phenomenal. We saw hundreds and hundreds, and it looks like everybody at the Sox Show Rodeo wants our funnel cakes. It's so wonderful to see that the vendors love coming back here each and every year and that this year's turnout has been one of the best turnouts they've seen in the past few years. If you want to learn more about the 2023 San Antonio Stock Show Rodeo, we've got that information up at ksat.com slash rodeo. Mia Montgomery, KSAT 12 News. Mia is awesome. So she did that on Wednesday. She went down, she came back to work with this massive, huge corn dog. <laughs> I know. And then uh, her photographer, Andrew Wilson, yeah. uh, who's our social media guru, they like split it and it was still... Still way too much. It was a lot of food. Where but hey, was I? I love corn dogs. Yes, if you're gonna go out to do the rodeo, you gotta go all, all out with the food for sure. Mm. Uh, now this weekend, the rodeo weather is gonna be cool and cloudy today, and muggy and mostly cloudy tomorrow. Outside right now, temperatures are in the 50s. You can see that it is. Uh, very cloudy out there too and on the horizon a little bit of a haze visibility is down to nine miles. There are areas of patchy fog out there and winds are from the north northeast at about 15 miles per hour. So just a touch breezy out there too. And as we look at the radar, it is quiet around San Antonio. Notice that there's no real returns on the radar, but look out to the west. You can see that out near Del Rio. There are areas of mist and drizzle right now working their way through Del Rio toward Lake Amistad and into Brackettville as well. But again, back here in San Antonio, things are pretty dry for us and just cloudy. You can see another way to see that drizzle on, on the map is to look at visibility. Visibility is down to half a mile in Rock Springs, down to two miles in Del Rio, down to five in Uvalde, and seven in Creso Springs. Around San Antonio metro area, visibility is as low as five miles in Kerrville and six miles in New Braunfels. Let's go ahead and zoom in and take a closer look around the Alamo City. Visibility down to five miles at Port S.A., down to seven at J. BSA Randolph. A chilly morning for us. It's 45 in Bernie, 47 in Bulverde, 48 in Canyon Lake, 51 here in San Antonio. You know, Sarah Costa and I were talking about this. It's a bit of a shock to the system after temperatures in the upper 80s for part of last week. So yeah, it is chilly out there. You're going to want the jacket throughout the day because temperatures are going to warm up, but not by too much because we're going to be socked into cloud cover. There may be a peak or two of sunshine here and there in the afternoon, but mainly a 
gray and cloudy day for us. Here's a look at today's forecast highs in a neighborhood view around San Antonio. It'll be 66 in Canyon Lake, 66 in a Lotus, 67 in San Antonio, 66 in Seguin, 71 at Stinson, 73 in Uvalde, 68 in Los Maples, 66 in Kerrville and 68 in Gonzales. Here's a look at your case at 12 hour forecast. Again, we're at 50 degrees right now. We're going to see temperatures only in the 50s this morning, right near 60 degrees around noon and then in the 60s in the afternoon. And if we're lucky, a few peaks of sunshine. It's mainly going to be a gray day, 67 for the high, which is right near about the average. Let's talk about the weather setup across the nation. A lot of snow heading into the northeast part of the United States right now. It is still winter, even though it's been pretty warm here in San Antonio and out in California, flooding and even some snow in parts of the mountains there. This is all from this uh, low pressure system with a cold front. This is going to make weather interesting across Texas. Let me take you through the future cast here, because even though we're not going to see a ton of rain in Texas from this system, as it moves into West Texas Sunday evening, take a look at these potential wind gusts across areas in Texas. Wind gusts of up to 70 miles per hour in Lubbock, up to 50 miles per hour Midland Odessa. It's not going to be that windy here in San Antonio. Again, a few gusts up to maybe 30 miles per hour, but I am going to be watching for any dust that that will kick up, whether or not we'll see that dust in San Antonio by Monday. As for rainfall, rain will mainly be limited across the Panhandle and North Texas. Around San Antonio, it's going to be pretty wimpy as that front moves through overnight Sunday into Monday. Maybe an isolated shower. That's the best we can do before we see clearing skies. Otherwise, any severe weather would be limited to the Panhandle, where numerous severe storms are possible. And temperatures this week are going to be pretty warm. You know, after today, we'll be near 80 degrees tomorrow with some morning fog and drizzle. So a warm day tomorrow with uh, muggy conditions. And then in the middle of the week, upper 80s for the high temperature. Plenty of sunshine, though. So a little bit of everything for everyone. Feeling a little bit more like winter today and like uh, spring as for the middle of the week, guys. I got a big pile of mulch delivered yesterday because I'm getting rid of my Good. getting rid of all my front yard grass. Yeah, putting oh, mulch are. mulch down to be sustainable. <laughs> Wow. And all my grass, you know, I'm tired of watering it, but I'm going to try to finish that project today since it'll be cooler. Yeah, I think that's a good idea, Sarah. Okay. It'll be windy tomorrow. So you it will avoid be muggy. <laughs> Don't have time for that humidity. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. All right. Time is 652, 50 degrees. Next, famous pop star Harry Styles is going to have to participate in New Zealand census. It's what he'll, it's what he it's what he'll get if he doesn't participate. That's important. Yeah, and taking a look outside San Antonio's roadways, not too much going on. Uh, just make sure you drive safe this morning if you're gonna be getting around. Welcome back, and whether he likes it or not, pop star Harry Styles is going to have to take part in New Zealand census because he'll be performing in Auckland, New Zealand on March 7th. The country census day New Zealand law dictates that everyone in the country, including overseas visitors, are required to take part. Now, questions usually range from household members, smoking habits, to gender and sexual identity, and income. So anyone who doesn't participate is subject to a fine. Harry. I love Harry Styles. Will he participate or will he pay the fine? He has the money to pay the fine. <laughs> he doesn't want to. Tell right. us if you smoke. <laughs> it's 656 and 50 degrees. We'll be right back. It's chilly outside. Temperatures are at 50 degrees in San Antonio, upper 40s across the hill country near Canyon Lake, mid 40s in Kerrville, Comfort and Bernie. It's 57 in Hondo, 52 in Gonzales. And today we're going to see temperatures climb to about 67. Cool and cloudy today, but morning fog and drizzle tomorrow. Muggy and windy with a high temperature closer to 79. So significantly warmer tomorrow. Windy weather will continue into Monday. And then look at that. Temperatures start to warm up. We'll be in the uh, mid to upper 80s by Tuesday through Thursday with a cool down Friday with our highs back into the 60s. Sounds about right for this time of year. Oh yeah. Start another part of coffee. We'll see you guys at 8. See you guys at 8. Live from KSAT 12. Good morning San Antonio starts right now. Horrific scene. Uh, horrific for the people that experience this and uh, again horrific for our firefighters. 
A dog owner is facing charges after an 81-year-old man is killed in a gruesome attack. Why neighbors tell us it's not the first incident for the dogs in that neighborhood. Plus, a wrong-way driver collides with an ambulance overnight on I-10. What charges they could be facing this morning? Much chillier start this morning, 50 degrees at 8 a.m., but Sarah Spivey says we'll have warmer temps later in the week. She'll let us know in just a bit. Good morning. I'm Jonathan Cotto filling in for Max Massey, who's out this weekend, and I'm joining Sarah Costa and, of course, Sarah Spivey this morning. Always a pleasure to have you, Jonathan. Likewise. The feeling is mutual, but, you know, it is 50 degrees out. You're saying you, you much rather be waking up to 50 degrees than 80. Anytime. Right. Anytime. You don't want that heat and the, the humidity slapping you in the face first thing in the morning. And so. still, I know it's almost March. It's creeping up on us <laughs> this next week. But, Sarah, uh, it, it gets, you said it's going to be spring-like temperatures the end of the week. Yeah, that's right. By the middle of this upcoming week, we are going to be seeing temperatures back into the 80s. But outside right now, it is chilly as we start our day. Temperatures are in the 40s, 45 in Bernie, 47 in Bulverde, 50 in San Antonio, 49 in Converse. It's 54 in Pleasanton, 51 in Gonzales, and 45 in Kerrville. This weekend is going to be a bit of a mixed bag. We've got some areas of fog out there right now, especially out west toward Del Rio. Today's going to be cool and cloudy. We're going to struggle to get out of the 60s, 67 for the high temperature, so a little bit warmer than yesterday, but still on the cool side. And then tomorrow, even warmer. We're going to have some morning fog and drizzle. It's going to be muggy tomorrow all day long and a bit windy, too. We'll see a few peaks of sunshine tomorrow and Sunday, but all in all, a pretty gray weekend. High temperature tomorrow, much warmer, nearer to 80 degrees. And again, as Sarah mentioned, we will have plenty of sunshine in the week ahead, and temperatures will be much warmer. I'll give you those details in just a few few minutes. Jonathan, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, the I-35 to I-10 ramp was shut down for nearly an hour overnight after a wrong-way driver crashed into an ambulance. Now, San Antonio police say the driver was spotted on the westbound lanes of I-10 around 3 this morning before attempting to get on I-35. The driver crashed into the ambulance head-on, but there were no injuries. The driver was taken into custody under suspicion of DWI. This morning, a west side neighborhood in disbelief after an 81 year old man is killed by a pack of dogs. And now one of the dog's owners is facing a state felony charge of injury to the elderly and another second degree felony charge. San Antonio police say the three dogs were euthanized just hours after that attack on Deplis Street near Couples Road. Multiple neighbors say they have witnessed the dogs bite people in the past. A woman who lives one street over says she saw the same group of dogs attack another man Last month, Animal Care Services says two of the dogs in Friday's attack bit someone earlier this year, but ACS has not confirmed if this video is of the January incident. She is in disbelief that the dogs were previously released. Unfortunately, I, I noticed that it has to be something bad for them to actually take action, and they should just do it on the first time. I mean, these dogs were taken in quarantine, that's what I was told, and they came back and this happened. ACS says they've made contact with the dog's owners multiple times in the past. That includes at least two confirmed bite cases involving at least two of those dogs. In your morning headlines, millions of dangerous fentanyl pills are off the streets thanks to a huge drug bust in Arizona. Take a look at this. The Arizona Attorney General and the Drug Enforcement Agency say they seized four and a half million fentanyl pills Friday. Now, along with 3,000 pounds of meth, the three-year operation also yielded 135 kilos of cocaine, nearly 150 guns, and $2 million in cash. Agents said the Sinaloa drug cartel brought the drugs up from Mexico. Meanwhile, several feet of snow is expected this weekend as a winter storm hits the West Coast. Blizzard warnings are posted in the Sierra Nevada and Southern California mountain ranges. The weather so severe there, major roadways are closed in place like Los Angeles in the Midwest and Northeast. People are digging out with power lines covered in ice. The western storm is expected to move east over the weekend, bringing the threat of damaging winds to the Midwest on Sunday. And the war in Ukraine has officially crossed the one year mark. That's right. And here at home, it was nearly a year ago that a local cheesecake shop was flooded with support. 
for its mission to help people in Ukraine. And this weekend, Like a Cheesecake on Broadway is doing it again. The Ukrainian-owned shop is holding a one-year-of-war fundraiser today and all weekend. Proceeds from all sales are going to support the armed forces of Ukraine. We've been getting uh, donations from people today, uh, just like driving all the way from like out of town to just come and donate and support us. Like a Cheesecake is located along Broadway, not far from Hildebrand. The full story and how to donate is on KSAT.com. Also this weekend, the Raindrop Foundation will be holding their annual Turkish food fair today. But this year, all the proceeds will go to the victims of the earthquakes who have direct connections to the Turkish community right here in San Antonio. As search and, res as search and recovery efforts continue, weeks after the massive quakes killed over 44,000 people in Turkey and Syria, Syria, many are forced to sleep on the street, in cars, tents and parks. The Raindrop Foundation plans to send all the proceeds from today's food fair to those in need. Their goal is to raise more than $15,000. Our Turkish food fairs has a very rich menu. So we have menu uh, like we have food for the entry level and we have food for for main dishes. I also like the gyro because the gyro in here is very different from the gyros in the restaurants. It's kind of mostly kind of handmade. The event will go from noon to 4 p.m. in front of the Raindrop Foundation's building, which is located on Vance Jackson. General admission is free, but you will need to buy tickets to try all that tasty food. We hope they reach their goal. That's right, and tasty food indeed. I've had a chance to visit Turkey, and the food by far is amazing. Awesome. It's 806 and 50 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, we'll look at what's trending now on KSAT.com, plus some events coming up in San Antonio as we move into the month of March. Plus. Hey, y'all, it's Mia Montgomery back out here at the rodeo. Coming up, I'm going to show you a preview of what all goes into the youth rodeo competitions here each year. And taking a look outside through live cam, visibility, well, we can't see much out there, but we do know it's 50 degrees, it's a little chilly. We'll be checking in with Sarah Spidey later in the newscast. Every cowgirl and cowboy has to start somewhere, and from the beginning, there's almost always a team there to support them, their family. That's right, our very own Mia Montgomery talked to some participants in this year's Youth Rodeo to find out how their path was supported long before they even started. Before competitors make it to the big stage, they start here at the Youth Rodeo. And since this is my first rodeo back here in San Antonio with the KSAT family, I wanted to learn a little bit more about what goes into these competitions. My parents and everybody in my family is rodeoed, so it just kind of came natural. I grew up on a ranch. We, I ride horses, break horses every day. I mean, that's the way I live my life. So I've always rodeoed, and my dad rodeoed when he was younger. He rode bulls, so it's just kind of been in the family for, for forever. My family's in South Texas, and we do a lot of, like, Mexican stuff, too, so the roping and everything, and team roping a lot, so... I was doing lead line when I was probably two or younger and my mom would just hold me on and from there I just kept going with it and I've really enjoyed it. It's taught me so many life lessons and I'm grateful to be in this world. My mom's always ridden, I've always ridden and then my oldest sisters, we all always ridden so it kind of just was infused in me. I was born with it um, and then I just like speed so I just felt like this would work. It's really fun. I mean, it, this event wouldn't be this big if it wasn't fun. Being out here, I've learned a lot about what goes into each of these youth rodeo competitions and that for a lot of these kids, it really is a family affair. If you want to learn more about the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo, we've got that information up at ksat.com slash rodeo. Mia Montgomery, KSAT 12 News. Last weekend of the rodeo too. Right. And, and it, it's rodeo like weather. Last weekend was warm and I feel like it should be a little cooler if you're going to be going like warmer weather is more of like fiesta. Weather, well, here's you know? the thing, you know, rodeo <laughs> weather is temperamental. In fact, our very own Justin Horn did a wonderful article on KSAT.com about how temperamental rodeo weather can be. But for the most part this year, you know, we really haven't had too many major issues. It's been cold at times. It's been warm at times. And this weekend's going to have a little bit of both. So right now outside, you can see that it is cloudy and it is chilly. Temperatures are right near 50 degrees 
and and there is a little bit of fog out there too. Visibility is reduced slightly at the airport. Winds are from the north at about 10 miles per hour. But as you look out to the west, you can see that visibility is even worse. Take a look up in Rock Spring. Visibility down to a quarter of a mile. Visibility down to a mile and a half in Del Rio. There are some areas of drizzle out for areas in Del Rio, Yavaldi, Rock Springs, uh, Bracketville, Eagle Pass this morning. As we zoom into San Antonio, you can see at the airport visibility is fine, but further up I-10 toward Bernie Stage Airfield, visibility less than a mile and a half because of fog and mist, visibility down two miles in New Braunfels and down to three in Kerrville. A foggy, chilly morning out there. Definitely doesn't feel like a weekend, but this is going to be the case for most of the day today. We're going to be pretty cloudy, although temperatures will warm up nicely. It's 45 right now in Bernie, 47 in Bulverde, 57 though in Hondo, 54 in Divine, 49 in Seguin, 56 in Yavaldi, 44 in Los Maples, and 45 in Kerrville. In the case at 12 hour forecast today, we'll spend the morning in the 50s here with winds from the northeast or east northeast at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. By noon, we'll be at 60 degrees, and it's going to be hard for us to shake the cloud cover today. If we're lucky, we'll see a few peaks of sunshine in the afternoon, but that's if we're lucky. 67 degrees for the high temperature, so a cool day, and a relatively cool evening, too, with temperatures in the low 60s after sunset. Now, depending on where you live, the high temperature is going to vary pretty drastically. Uh, up in Kerrville and around New Braunfels and here in San Antonio, upper 60s, even out toward Del Rio. 68, but notice how warm it will be down south toward Catula Laredo in the 80s. That's because there will be a little bit more sunshine for those folks down south of San Antonio, but otherwise it's going to be a cool day for us here. And in fact, our coolest day over the next seven days. Take a look at these high temperatures. Tomorrow will be near 80 degrees, even though it's going to be fairly cloudy. And then by Tuesday through Thursday, our highs are going to be the mid to upper 80s. We do see another front on the way Thursday night to Friday, and that'll set up a cooler day as we end the week on Friday, but still again Saturday today going to be the coolest day of the next seven days. As you look at the weather setup right now, a big uh, snowstorm working its way across the Great Lakes toward uh, the northeast. Lots of snowfall for them. It is still winter after all and a dynamic system across California right now, bringing snow to the higher elevations, flooding rains near Los Angeles. This is going to be making for interesting weather across Texas in the coming days. West Texas in the panhandle will have of high winds. We could see potential gusts of up to 70 miles per hour and it's pretty dusty out there. So it'll be interesting to see if by Monday we can see some dust here in San Antonio from that wind. Here in San Antonio it will not be that windy. However, we are going to be seeing wind gusts of up to 25 to 30 miles per hour both Sunday and Monday, uh, tomorrow and Monday of this upcoming week. After that though, it is going to be pretty warm and we will see plenty of sunshine in the week ahead. Uh, we, uh, as far as rain goes, unfortunately, not a good chance for rain, perhaps an isolated shower Sunday night to Monday and again Thursday night to Friday. But coming up in the next half hour, we'll talk a little bit more in depth about what parts of Texas could see some severe weather from that dynamic system that's in California right now. I know you talked a little bit about it uh, last weekend. We're officially out of La Nina? We, uh, we're we in are. A, a, we're in between in, phase. We're in the in between phase and between La Nina and El Nino with a good chance of getting into La Nino by the, uh, El Nino by the end of the year. And here's the thing, uh, that would typically mean a wetter winter for us, which would be good news. We, we need, we need the rain. We do need the rain. Thank Absolutely. you, Sarah. All right, time is 816, 50 degrees. Coming up before 830, Dancing with the Stars coming to San Antonio. We'll hear from some of the dancers themselves on what it's like to perform on the big stage. Nice, and just ahead, a new month means new events in the Alamo City. We'll check out what's trending on KSAT.com in just moments. Let's take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, four, eight, seven, fireball five, daily four, 9139 Fireball 1. And Cash 5, those lucky numbers are 20, 21, 26, 29, and 30. Mega Millions 2, 22, 49, 65, 67, Mega Ball 7, Mega Plier 4. Good luck. Looking ahead to some events happening in San Antonio, the Spay and Neuter Network is offering free Spay, Neuter, Microchips and Vaccines for San Antonio area pets in celebration of its grand opening. The two-day event will be from March 3rd to the 4th at the clinic's new office. The clinic is located at 210 Toledo Drive. For more information about the schedule, an appointment for your pup, you can find it 
it on ksat.com. And to celebrate La Primavera, that's spring, the San Antonio Zoo will be inviting guests to its two-month-long blooms, bees and butterflies festival. The festival will be from March 1st through May 26th. The zoo will have dance parties, craft stations and educational performances. The zoo will also hold a spring break event from March 11th through the 19th, offering guests extended hours, music, food and games. Love to see that. Absolutely. The zoo is always happening. It's one of my favorite places. So if you have nothing to do, sign up for that. All right, it's 821 and 50 degrees. And after the break, Dancing with the Stars is coming to the Alamo City. We'll tell you when, plus a preview from the dancers themselves. Next. The Dancing with the Stars tour is in San Antonio this weekend. We spoke to some of the stars of the show, and this is what they say you can expect. There's nothing better than dancing in front of a live audience. On, on TV, you know, there's all these nerves and you want your partner to do it right. And it's, you know, you're live for millions of people. If you mess up, you're going to question yourself all night and not sleep well. On tour, you just got to go out there and have fun and honestly connect to the audience. The people who have been supporting us over all of these years, voting for us every season. And you get to go out and, and look into their eyes and and make each other smile. I know I smile whenever I get to go out on stage and, and see somebody just enjoying what I get to do. There's nothing more beautiful, to me at least, than me living out my dream and yet making somebody feel better in life and, and maybe changing their mood for the better. I think as a whole, this whole tour is going back to that more authentic way of ballroom dancing, which is something I think that the audience really resonate with because we, we're a specialized group of dancers. That's what we do and that's what we love. So bringing it back to the roots and, and to the very core of the show is going to be really exciting this year. For more information about tickets to the show at the Majestic Theater, you can head to our website, ksat.com. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. You know what, Sarah? I can really see you on Dancing with the Stars. Is it my extravagant, dramatic personality? I think so. I take that as a huge compliment. <laughs> I can see you killing the paso doble. Thank you, Jonathan. Cha cha. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, time is 826, 50 degrees. Still ahead at 830, David Elder gives us a delicious ribeye slider with Shiner Bach onions recipe. That's coming up on Texas Eats. And heart disease affects over 100 million Americans every year, but putting one foot in front of the other can make a huge difference. Good morning, it's 8.30 on this beautiful Saturday morning, February 25th. The last weekend of February, That's the last it. weekend of rodeo, rodeo, and then it'll be fiesta. That's and right, before we know it. <laughs> and Sarah, by the end of the week, it's going to start feeling very spring-like again. More like spring, exactly. Yeah, it's chilly this morning and cloudy. We've also got areas of uh, mist and drizzle out there. Take a look at the pollen count, though, that we just got in today. Molds, elm, oak, and ash are all present, but in low amounts, so not really much to worry about as far as the allergies go, although the trees are <coughs> pollinating right now. Another sign that spring is right around the corner. 49 in New Braunfels, it's 45 in Kerrville, 43 in Rock Springs, but 56 in Del Rio, 59 in Carissa Springs, and 54 in Pleasanton. Around San Antonio, we are seeing areas of patchy fog and mist. Visibility is down to two miles in New Braunfels, but it's really worse out west toward Rock Springs, where visibility is less than half a mile, and less than a mile and a half in Del Rio. Lots of mist out there right now in Del Rio. Again, the last weekend of the rodeo, and if you're planning on going out there today in downtown San Antonio, Antonio. Around noon, we're going to be cloudy at 60 degrees. If we're lucky, a few peaks of sunshine this afternoon, but it is going to be a pretty gray day. 67 for the high. East northeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour in a cool evening in the low 60s. Here's what we're going to talk about in the forecast tomorrow. We are going to start off with morning fog and drizzle. It's going to be a muggier day with a high temperature closer to 80 degrees tomorrow. Then in the week ahead, as Sarah was mentioning earlier, sunny and warm. We'll have highs in the upper 80s feeling a lot like late spring and then I also want to talk about some West Texas dust. We'll be monitoring for dust to make it over here to San Antonio by Monday. A lot to talk about in the forecast details in just a few minutes. Jonathan, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. And we're heading into another weekend. So that means construction closures will be stepping up. Our Stephen Cabasos is here to tell you where they are and how to avoid the traffic backups that will follow. 
Road work is expected to continue in and around the Alamo City throughout the weekend. So as always, just make sure you plan your commute ahead of time because we're going to see work take place here along Loop 1604 on the north central side of San Antonio. In fact, material haul off will begin around 8 in the morning on Saturday and hopefully should wrap at 3 in the afternoon. We're going to see a westbound main lane exit ramp closure from Lock Hill Selma to Vance Jackson Road. So again, plan that commute around that area. I-35 on the northeast side of San Antonio will see striping and barrier work take place overnight. Now that's been current, but the work will continue on Saturday, February 25th at 9 in the evening and should wrap hopefully by 5 in the morning. We'll see alternating lane closures along the I-35 southbound connector ramp to Loop 410 westbound. All right, one last jump for the weekend as we get ready to wrap it up because utility work will take us all the way up until Monday, February 27th. That work does begin at 9 in the morning and should hopefully wrap around 3 in the afternoon. A southbound lane closure at Cedar Trail is what drivers can expect. And hey, plan the commute ahead of time. As I said, know before you go, scan that QR code that takes you to our KSAT traffic page. We have a full list of all the closures that are happening in our area. So again, plan that commute ahead of time, guys. And this morning, bond has been set at $50,000 and $75,000 for a dog owner facing two felony charges. San Antonio police say his dogs were involved in a brutal attack that killed an 81-year-old man Friday afternoon. They were later euthanized last night. San Antonio police say the attack happened on Deplis Street near Couples Road. Multiple neighbors say they have witnessed the dogs bite people in the past. A woman who lives one street over says she saw the same group of dogs attack another man last month. Animal Care Services says two of the dogs in Friday's attack bit someone earlier this year, but ACS has not confirmed if this video of, the Janu of, of that January incident. She's in disbelief that the dogs were previously released. Unfortunately, I, I noticed that it has to be something bad for them to actually take action, and they should just do it on the first time. I mean, these dogs were taken in quarantine, that's what I was told, and they came back, and this happened. ACS says they've made contact with the dog's owners multiple times in the past. That includes at least two confirmed bite cases involving at least two of those dogs. Meanwhile, a community united in grief after three lives were lost in a trailer home fire in Von Army. Last night, that community came together to remember those who were lost. You can see the large group of people there to support the family members of those victims. 39-year-old Vanessa Ortega and her two grandchildren, 3-year-old Mia and 1-year-old Ezequiel Oyervides, died Sunday morning in that fire. Their family will never be the same. It's not easy. It's not going to be easy. This is a new journey for them, and, and um, we need to pray for this family. Right now, crews are still trying to figure out what exactly sparked that deadly fire. Well, Friday marked five years since the death of a San Antonio rapper, Christopher Polk. Polk was shot and killed while he was driving on February 24th back in 2018. San Antonio police say they are still looking for the clues in his murder. He had just left the ice lounge at Evers Road in Loop 410. SAPD is now releasing this video on your screen, hoping it will help lead them to the suspect. So what you're looking at is officers are looking for two vehicles, a silver SUV and a black sedan. They say those vehicles drove up next to Polk's car and started shooting. Polk died at the scene. If you know anything that can help, you're asked to call police 210-207-7635. A local school district is asking parents, well, to remind their children of the consequences of taking a gun to school. That's after a gun was apparently found in the bag of a Roosevelt High School student on Friday. Now we want to be clear, there was no shooting and no one was hurt. In a letter to parents, NEISD stated that student did not make any threats. Still, weapons are not allowed on a school campus. The student was arrested. And it's a parent's worst nightmare. Police in San Marcos say a student was hit and killed in the parking lot of a middle school. It happened yesterday morning during drop-off at Goodnight Middle School. The 11-year-old student was hit in the drop-off lane at the campus. Law enforcement says the driver is not being charged. School was canceled for the day. All right, time is 836. Temperature is 50 degrees. Still ahead at 830, David Elder giving us a new recipe involving ribeye, shiner, bock, and onions. We'll explain in Texas Eats. Most people think in order to be super heart healthy, you need to do intense cardio. But did you know just constantly getting up and walking can have similar benefits to your heart and even add years to your life? How many steps you should take a day to lengthen your life and the number will surprise you.
50 degrees at 837. If you do decide to go for a walk today, you're going to need a light jacket out. Sarah Spivey will have our forecast when we come back. February is American Heart Month and heart disease is the number one leading cause of death in America affecting over 121 million Americans. That's right, but can just putting one foot in front of the other significantly lower your risk, not just against heart disease, but all disease? And as it turns out, walking daily can actually help you live longer with a few thousand steps every day. I used to run races and play competitive tennis. Ooh, girl, 2003 called. They want your sunglasses back. But that intense cardio put some intense stress on my body. And two surgeries later, you know, yeah, I stick to walking daily. Of course, intense working out and exercise is great for your heart and overall health. But a recent study showed by just simply walking, you can significantly increase your chances of living longer. The results show that the more steps you take a day, you're not only greatly lowering your chances of dying from heart disease, but all disease. Come on guys. But does it have to be 10,000 steps? 10,000 steps is the goal. Here is why. That 10 year study showed people who averaged 4,000 steps a day, 64% died versus the people who took 12,000 steps a day, only 9% died. 10,000 steps a day is about four miles. 12,000 is about five, but it doesn't have to be done all at once. Cardiologists say walking five times a week, 30 minutes at a time is great, but so is walking five, 10, 15 minutes at a time, as many times as it takes. In fact, the more often you get up, the better. What's bad are those long periods of sedentary behavior. <laughs> that was clever, Sarah. And you know what? Here's the thing. Sarah Acosta let, let me get her treadmill. Yes. That your old treadmill. Which was meant for children or small women. But I walk <laughs> on it. And I walked six miles on it. Look yesterday. at you. I'm so Sarah. proud with of you. A little, with a movie on. Were you Olympic you know? style walking? Oh, like See fast that. walking? Listen, I did take a fast walking class in college. That's a little known fact <laughs> about me. I'm going to share that video on oh, my no. Instagram okay. later. Uh, do yourself a favor and check it out. Sarah Spivey, speed walking will make your oh my goodness. day. It's but it's good to know that you, you just need to do a little movement. It's right? all it takes. You don't have to do that crazy cardio. Now, I'm not saying crazy cardio is bad for you. It's, it's good. excellent for you. But for those of us that might be injured, older, or you're just not that cardio queen or king all you have to do is get up and walk <laughs> and if sense. you're inspired after that story today's the perfect day to go out for a walk it's going to be a little cloudy all day and cool but at least you won't be sweating too much right okay let's go ahead and take a look outside right now and you can see kind of dreary looking out there with uh, visibility down to nine miles at the airport and 50 degrees but as we look out to the west there are areas of drizzle and mist for our friends out in del rio this morning out near brackettville as well. Let's go ahead and zoom in there. You can see again uh, just south of Lake Amistad we're seeing some of that uh, drizzle and mist at the moment. I turned up the intensity of that radar so that you can see. Another way to see that is by looking at the visibility. Visibility down to two miles in Del Rio down to less than half a mile in Rock Springs and as we zoom into San Antonio visibility is low as two miles in New Braunfels and as low as less than a mile up I-10 uh, Bernie Stage Airfield between Bernie and uh, Leon Springs. So some areas Areas of fog out there for our friends in the northwest part of Bear County into Kendall County. But around San Antonio, visibility is fine. You just might run into a few pockets of fog here and there. Temperatures are on the cool side 45 in Bernie, 47 in Boulevard, 47 in Canyon Lake, 52 in Port SA, at Port SA rather, 50, 48 in Seguin, 57 in Yavaldi and Hondo, 51 in Gonzales. And as we look at the future cast for the day today, it's going to be hard for us to see any sunshine. May get a peak of sunshine here and there, but generally it's going to be a pretty overcast day with high temperatures in the mid to upper 60s around San Antonio in the hill country and the low 70s for areas like Poteet, Pleasanton, Floresville, Divine, Nixon, Smiley area. Another way to look at that is in our KSAT 12 hour forecast. We're going to spend most of this morning in the 50s, 60 degrees around noon, looking at high temperature right around 67 this afternoon, uh, and it looks like we're going to be in the low 60s after sunset, so cool evening 
evening for us. All right, let's talk about the weather setup right now. Fairly quiet across Texas, lots of snowfall for the northeast and then across California, a very dynamic system bringing snow to the higher elevations, flooding rains to Los Angeles area. This a low pressure system and cold front, it's going to lose a little bit of its oomph when it comes to rainfall, when it makes its way into Texas by uh, Sunday night. But it is going to make it very windy across the Panhandle and West Texas. This is a look at potential wind gusts Sunday afternoon. Wind gusts of up to 60 to 70 miles per hour in areas from the Panhandle to West Texas. There's a lot of dust out there, so it could kick up that dust and push it towards San Antonio by Monday. Notice though in San Antonio, we do not anticipate wind gusts this strong. In fact, gusts may up, occur up to 25 to maybe up to 30 miles per hour. That's it. Then as we look ahead again, rainfall for North Texas, but here in San Antonio, looking very slim for us across the hill country, perhaps a passing shower Sunday night into Monday morning, a, only a 20% chance of isolated rain. Then we'll see some sunshine finally Monday, Tuesday, and most of next week. Now, as far as severe weather goes uh, up across the panhandle, numerous severe storms are possible from that system. Uh, but again, here in San Antonio, it's going to be hard for us to see any rain whatsoever. Take a look at those highs tomorrow. Noticeably warmer will be near 80 degrees, stubborn clouds with morning fog and drizzle. And then again, it will be windy Sunday night into Monday. 80s Monday finally and then we'll be looking at highs in the mid to upper 80s by the middle to the end of next week. Then we get another front moving through that knocks our temperatures back down into the 60s. I've got a look at the pollen count coming up in the next half hour. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Well, temperature is 51 degrees, 847. After the break, it's time for a juicy ribeye. David Elder's checking out this delicious recipe next on Texas Eats. And taking a look outside at our roadways, this is at 14 at Bandera. Road conditions look clear. Safe driving, everyone. We'll be right back. Oh, let's take a look at the lotto numbers. Pick three, four, eight, seven, Fireball five, Daily four, nine, one, three, nine, Fireball one. Cash five, those lucky numbers are 20, 21, 26, 29, and 30. And Mega Millions, two, 22, 49, 65, 67, Mega Ball seven, Mega Plier four. My goodness, check this out. You have all that herb butter that's just gone to the top of the bread, nice and toasty on the bottom. The cheese is melted, the steak is already cooked to perfection, the onions are beautiful. To get this recipe, just head to our website, ksat.com slash Texas Eats. Make this at home, you're gonna be a rock star. Everybody's gonna love it. Plus, you're gonna have some Schinerbach left over, so why not? You get to crack one open, enjoy yourself. That's the bite. That's fantastic. My goodness. Mm. Are Shiner's twist off? You know, I don't know. Okay, our producer <laughs> Colin just told me yes, they are twist off. Well, now we know. Now Is it too know. early for a Shiner? Never too early. <laughs> Not on our schedule. <laughs> Not on our schedule. Not at all. It's 852 and 51 degrees. Up next, there's a lot going on today, including some events happening right now. We'll get you caught up before you head out the door. Happening now, take your pick, lemon, orange, pomegranate, or avocado, my favorite. These are just a few type of trees the San Antonio Parks and Recreational Department has given away this morning. There's over 800 fruit trees for free at the newly named Sweet and Green event. It's already started at Rosedale Park, and it's on a first-come, first-serve basis. And looking ahead, starting this morning in just a few minutes at 9, the health care services and Bear County's local mental health authority is hosting a hiring fair. They are looking to fill more than 30 positions that includes care managers, licensed clinicians and licensed licensed chemical dependency counselors. If you plan on attending, make sure you to bring your resume and be ready to have an interview on the spot. It's happening at the Center for Healthcare Services Central location from 9 to 1 p.m. That's 6800 Park 10 Boulevard in the West Building. And meanwhile, strawberry picking season is sprouting and several farms near San Antonio are letting you come pick your own produce. 
While Hill Country locations won't be open till March, Sweetberry Farm in Marble Falls will be the first farm to open up. Starting today, if you're looking for more locations, we have all that information on our website, ksat.com. Just look for this article. And as we continue to celebrate Black History Month, there are still events happening across San Antonio you can be a part of. If you have some free time later today, consider swinging by the Carver Library. City officials and volunteers will be hosting the fourth annual San Antonio African American Book Festival. This event was created to highlight the power of black literature, reinforce the importance of representation, and encourage black economics. This event is free and open to the public. The first part of the event is between 1030 in the morning and 3 p.m. The Carver Library meeting room. The second part of the event will be between 12 and 5 at the Second Baptist Community Center. Love that so much. And before we go to break, there's a few other job fairs happening across our city, including one at Legacy Traditional School starting in just minutes at 9 this morning until noon. Both Texas campuses will be hosting on-site interviews. Multiple positions are open, and you can check what those are on, our, on the school's website. You're asked to bring your resume, credentials, and other important documents when you come for the interview. It's 8.56 and 51 degrees. That's right, and up next at 9, Boeing is halting deliveries of its 787 Dreamliners. Why the feds are stepping in to look at any safety issues in your morning headlines. And a new drug is sweeping across major cities in the United States, why some people are calling it the zombie drug. 